right, so I think we can start right now and then I'll let more people in as we go. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. The following seminar is brought to you by iExplore. I'm honored to be introducing our seminar presenter, Ryan Kern, who will be telling us all about managing our emotions and how to control them. All right, so Ryan, take it away. Thank you. Okay, so like she mentioned, I'm Ryan Kern, and let me get my pointer. I like to play water polo, and I also like to play the piano. I currently am in 10th grade at Troy High School, and I really love biology, and when I grow up, I want to become a doctor. So before we go into today's topic about emotions, I wanted to kind of bring up something from last seminar, if you guys remember, where we talked about healthy eating. And I wanted to showcase, because remember, at the end, I asked you guys to send us your, uh, your healthy food plates. So I wanted to show, got, show you guys what people sent in. Here is Richard, eight years old from Canada. And he has like fish, brown rice, broccoli, and also the fruit. And he actually has yogurt for his dairy, which is also very good too. And he did a great job because he has a lot of fruit here. And he also has a lot of like the dark green veggies, right? We talked about how the, the contrasting color is actually healthy. And he also has the grains and the fish. So great job, Richard. Over here, we have Michael, who's 12 years old from Boston. He also did a good job because you see he has actually a lot of fruit here. Maybe he could work a little bit on the vegetables because you only see really mushroom and tomatoes. So maybe some like salad or something on the side too. But it's pretty good. He has bread and then he also has hummus, which is very interesting. It's also like it has the beans. So it's a, another source of protein too. Here we have Cindy, who's nine years old living in New York. She did a good job here. This is what I was kind of referencing to because he has carrots, she has the leafy greens, has the mushrooms, and she also has the watermelon and protein here. However, um, I think she could, she could probably uh, work a little better on the pizza, but overall it's pretty good. Here we also have Nathan, who is 11 years old, actually from California, very cool. Here he has some cucumbers, some golden kiwi, those, those are delicious. And we have his meat here. And this, I believe, is some, I think that looks like egg or like chicken. So yeah, pretty good too. Maybe add a little more vegetables though, because you can't go wrong with a little bit more vegetables. Okay, so now we're going to dive into what we have today, how to deal with your emotions. I know that during this time, it's very, it's very important actually, because it's hard when school is online and all of us, it's hard for us because we're not in class, we can't see our friends. It's just kind of rough sometimes. And that's why we need to really learn how to manage our emotions. So that way we can really start to take control of our own lives and start doing the things we really want to do versus have how we feel really change who we are and make us like not sure of who we are either. We don't want that. We're going to start off as usual here with what are our emotions. This can get pulled, and I want you guys to get start thinking about what our emotions and everyone has like the same idea before we start. Do we think they're random things just floating in our body, or they don't exist, or maybe they are what we feel and how we react to things? That'd be pretty interesting if they're like random things floating in our body. That means you could probably take out one emotion. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, we'll give everyone a couple more seconds here. Yeah, we can close the polls now. Great, you guys are doing amazing. B, good job. What we feel and how we react to things, right? So that's really what emotions are at their very baseline, like the core concept of emotions. Now we look here, like here's a couple examples of different emotions, right? It's not really just the happy and sad and angry. There's also like disgust, like if you see something disgusting or you laugh or you're embarrassed or you're shocked. There's really a lot of different emotions that you can have at one time too. You know, sometimes you wanna laugh at the same time you wanna cry or like you can have mixed emotions. It's not just clear cut. It's not like you will be mad or you will be happy or you will be happy or sorry, you will be like laughing or something like that we will be ashamed. Sometimes those all three can be mixed together or all of them and it can become very complex, which I really know it's, it's difficult because if we don't have an understanding of what emotions are and they start mixing like this, then we 
feel really weird. We just don't know what to do. We don't know why we feel weird. We don't we have so many questions and it's hard for us to focus too on the great part of our life that we want to do all these fun things, you know, go outside, play, like talk to friends, do all these great things. But with all these conflicting emotions mixing together, we don't know really what to do. So I, I hope I'm going to clear up some of those in this seminar. Here we're going to go over these are the basic, basic types of emotions. So we already talked a little bit of happiness. There's also sadness. You can also be afraid or disgust and also like surprised, right? And let me move this up here. And yeah, you can also be like angry, which sometimes like it's kind of hard because if you react to something and they become super angry, you just, you can't really see things like logically. And that's sometimes the dangerous part of emotions because all you feel is just like the things that you feel, you feel really sad or you feel really angry. And then your brain doesn't really like tell you, oh no, wait, maybe we shouldn't do that. And then what can happen is you start doing things and then it leads to another bad thing. And we don't want that. So I'm going to teach you guys how we can kind of control that, manage it so it doesn't take control of us. Yeah. And here are some other ones too, right? We can love something. We can like it. We can be mad still. We can be happy. We can be shocked or we can be sad. Yeah. Cool. And here we also see some more, right? And just the, the really important thing is to notice that I have, I have some examples here, but this is not limited to it because technically you could come up with a word for being like happy and sad, or you come up with a word for being angry and sad or come up with like expression. So really, once again, it's very complex, not very easy to always pinpoint, but by using kind of general rules, you can really narrow down and really help yourself in that way. And one more thing I wanted to say about emotions is that they're totally normal. It's okay. We all get like upset. We all get sad. We all laugh a lot sometimes, or we, we just have all these emotions. It's okay. That's normal. That's fine. But we don't want it to the point where we have these emotions. We don't know how to control them and they get out of control. And then all of a sudden we just get sad maybe or confused more or unhappy again because we don't know what's happening. We don't want that. Okay, so we're gonna actually do this kind of fun activity here. Here's a fun fact. I don't know if many of you knew this already or not, but there's actually emotions associated with color. So here we have yellow. So really by having yellow, a lot of the times they they've did like a study and stuff and they've noticed that people tend to associate it with being like warm and happy or blue, sometimes like cool, like relaxing. And so we see all of these different different colors and their different like emotions or stuff that people feel really when they see that color so we're going to do this pretty fun activity i think and here it is i'm going to show you a slide that's just one color that's it and i want you to put it into the chat what you feel so like what your emotion maybe it's happy maybe it's sad maybe it's like confusion maybe it's just like relaxed or something like that so let's let's see how you guys do here and there's no right answer it's really based off of how you feel and really what you've experienced. Cause let's say for some reason you are scared of the ocean because when you're younger, you almost got lost. Then maybe the color blue might not be as like cool and relaxing as other people. So it's really based on your own. Okay. We're going to first start with this red here. It's very bright, but I'd like you guys to put it in the chat and then Kathy can read it off. Yep. So I opened this chat completely up again. So you guys can definitely just share your emotions, whether openly or just to me directly. Right, so we have angry, and then two angries, and someone said blood. Mm -hmm. Right, angry, angry, angry. Someone seems yeah. very angry at the red. And yeah. then angry, disgusted, actually. And angry, we have love, angry. Yeah. So far, annoyance, actually, hot, normal. Yeah, so passion. that sounds that sounds great, yeah. And again, there's a lot of variation, but the one thing we see is like angry, or sometimes it can be even danger. Because if we just think about the color red for a second, it's very, very bright. And it's just like, it has like kind of a bright, like shocking kind of color. So when you look at like, let's say all the danger signs, they always have red because it's the most like visible, most eye catching. And sometimes that's why when we see red, we associate it with it being dangerous. We associate it with it being angry. We associate it with it being bad because a lot of like 
a lot of things like the danger signs can be read or the stop signs can be read. And that just over time through like living through like just society day to day, we start to make those connections. That's why a lot of people said angry or, you know, like danger and annoyance and stuff like that. Great job, everyone. Here we have green. So this one might be a little interesting because I feel like it's going to be more complex. It's not as clear cut as just the red where it's like obviously angry. So I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Yeah, definitely. We got an array of answers. First one is light, calm, disgust, slime, disgust, lively, live, poison, disgust, safety, nothing, normal, nature, disturbing. So I'm not going to read all of them because we did get quite a few answers. But that is pretty much all of them and fresh. Yeah. So yeah, that's the other thing too, because we see again, based off your situation, based off like who you are really, there's like different, different way you can look at the color green, right? Many people see like trees. So they think like nature and life. Many other people see like slime and they see like disgusting or stuff like that. So it's very, very just interesting exercise to get you to kind of realize that, Oh, I can, I can really just be reacting. Even though this is just a color, I can already feel some emotion too. And we're only going to do a couple more here. This one's pink. All right. So open up the chat again. Anyone have any ideas on what you feel? Uh, whoa, a lot of answers here. We have poison, royalty, love, loyalty, flamingo, happy, uh, stuff, relaxing, heart one, heartwarming, uh, steadfastness. Ooh, that's a long word uh love relaxing love so love is a pretty big one here i think yeah and that's that's like a really cool thing because like people often see pink they see the hearts and everything like that right and also with the color pink it's also bright but i feel like it's versus red is not as like shocking it's just more calming it feels more like welcoming in a sense and we only have i think but just two more here so we have blue which we're trying to go over the major colors we have quite a few calm, peaceful, sad, um, let's see, calm, again, calm, serenity, cool, calm. So I think that's a major one here. Yeah. And that's why sometimes people that live by the ocean, because it's blue or live by a lake, they feel very relaxed or calm because of the blue. And also the sounds, too, can play an effect into the, like what they feel. And finally, this is just black. Mm, let's see we got death nothing uh calm cool fear scary uh possibility depressed disgust happy fear void nothing yeah. uh yeah that, that sounds great because yeah we notice like let's say maybe black gray and white those three colors they don't have that like color to them really because they don't have like that red or that beautiful like blue or green they're just very solid. And that's why a lot of times, especially really with black, like you can see it as like a very sometimes negative and sometimes white is seen with like rebirth or just, just like going to a wedding, they wear like white dresses and stuff like that. So once again, this was a great activity because I was really happy to hear what you guys, uh, what you guys thought and also for you to recognize, oh, I can actually have my own emotions, even though this is something very simple, and we can kind of think about that in our everyday life where it's very complex and it's not just just a color really okay so now we have one more question here too is how should we deal with our emotions right because we're like okay so we have emotions but so what what do we do with them right do we just ignore them should we be afraid of them or do we need to face them confidently And we'll give people just a couple more seconds. Okay, I think we can close the polls now. Yeah, great job. So once again, we need to face them confidently, right? Because I kind of hinted at this before, is that if we don't face them confidently and we like just ignore them or we try to be afraid of them, we're going to run into issues where like our emotions are going to start controlling who we are. Right? We need to kind of think like, hey, who's in charge, me or like what I feel, right? 
Because a lot of times we're talking about how you can be angry. You can make bad decisions just because you're so angry. And at that time, you just can't think of anything else except being like mad. Or you just feel so sad and you can't think about anything else but, but being sad. Or you just feel so happy and there's no, no real problem with feeling happy. But with some of the more like negative emotions, when we have a lot of it and we experience that, it's hard because we just, we feel that and we're like, we want to do something about it. And sometimes we overreact or we don't do anything at all. And we need to really get to that middle ground where we can face them with confidence. But that's a big question, right? It's not like, oh, okay, I'm going to face it with confidence. And the next day you're like, okay, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm ready. I face them with confidence. I'm done. It's not like that. It really takes process. And you really have to know, like, who, who am I? Do, do I get angry easily? Do I get sad easily? Am I happy a lot? And questions like that really help you, like, understand who you are as a person, too. Because like I was talking about with the colors, it's all about your perspective on life and really what happened in, like, your past or something like that. That really makes why we're so unique, right? Like seven, eight billion people in the world today, all of us are unique. And it's because we've each experienced different things and that's really shaped us to be who we are today. Yeah, so how do we face it confidently? We should try to understand why we feel a way, a certain way, then you're gonna be able to face your emotions, right? And like, let's say for example, um, yeah, I'll try to think of an example here. But when, when you understand like why you feel a certain way, so let's say someone, another kid at school broke your pencil on purpose. Well, you feel very mad, right? Because like, hey, that's my pencil. You're not supposed to break it, stuff like that. But when you understand like why you think feel a certain way, and I'm going to give you guys some steps to really help you avoid the consequences or the bad things that happen. If you just immediately act, like let's say you, you just you're just so mad like that other person broke your pencil and then you overreact and then we cause like all sorts of problems. We don't want that. Right. We want to be very like calm. And then, but it's, it's hard because on the inside you're like, I'm so mad. But if we think about it logically, right. In, in real life, in perspective, it is, it is your pencil, but it is just a pencil. It's not like he took a ton of money or he, he like hurt someone you loved or something like that. It's really, he just broke a pencil and maybe he thought it was a joke. And so when, when you kind of break it down onto that level, then you're like, well, yes, it's not good. Maybe he really should apologize, but I don't need to get super angry out of him. I don't need to get mad at him for the rest of like my life. I don't need to go into all this drama, right? Because we break it down again. It's just a pencil. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to go through the day again and tomorrow's going to be fine. The world's going to keep spinning, you know? And that's just really one thing we have to kind of, it's called like making it abstract. So taking yourself out of your situation and just thinking, right? And sometimes it's very hard, but hopefully with practice, you'll get better at that. And it'll help you really, because sometimes other people want you to be mad and they, they want to see like, is this person really going to be able to control their emotions or are they just going to let them all out on everyone, right? And here is a really cool picture of just how complicated our brain is, right? Like we can see all this and then this is obviously not in our brain, but it really shows how like everything is connected, but it's also very complex. It's not, it's not simple. Just like, Oh, okay. This thing goes here and then this thing goes there and then blah, blah, blah. No, it's really like a web and it all goes into like each other. And that's why a lot of times emotions can go over everything and kind of like overshadow it. And then that's why we think something's okay when it's really not. And, that's why we got to remember, hey, we got to flip it back, okay? We need to keep our big, big brains on, you know, keep it smart, keep it logical. Don't overreact and stuff like that. Here, once again, we really do have an option, although sometimes it doesn't feel like that. We, we do have an option to some extent. Maybe we don't have an option if, like, we feel sad, right, or mad, but we can control how mad we feel. Because with the pencil example, if you get so mad, you just like go like completely crazy and then you start doing like all sorts of crazy things, then that's that you're not controlling your emotions and you, that, that's really hard, right? That's going to cause a lot of problems in the future versus you're angry, but you keep it and you're, you're still okay. Everything's fine. You're just kind of calm and then you just ask him or ask him or her, whoever broke the pencil. Maybe you tell the teacher, the teacher gives you a new pencil and then everything is okay, right? 
So we really do have an option. And I'm gonna show you this really great quote here, is that no one makes you feel anything. It is how you react and respond that determines your emotions. No one can be like, you will be mad. Like you will be mad. They can't just be like that, right? They can do a lot of things that are supposed to make you mad, but how you feel is what's gonna make you mad. Or they're like, um, they might say like, I'm gonna make you like very sad or something or something like that, right? Really, we are in control in our emotions at the end of the day. We can't really control what happens outside in life and a lot of crazy things like kid breaks your pencil. You can't control that. You can't really stop that most of the time. But you can control how you react to that. And that's a lot of the times one of the main things that you can control and you can do that can really change your life. Which is why I think it's so important for many people to realize this because today like it's very hard with us being behind a screen and like we, we're not at school and we're not talking with our friends but we need to kind of realize that yes like what's going to happen if i'm if i'm sad all the time right is it going to make me feel better no and why am i sad well there's not really anything i can do to control it right the situation right now unprecedented like everyone's trying to do their best through it and so you just do your best too right try to control it try to be like Yes, I know it's like kind of sad, but what can I do to help it? And we're going to talk about that too in this lecture about like, what can you do? Sometimes you feel just so angry, so confused. So all of these emotions, you have no clue what to do. And if you just sit there in your room and just keep thinking about them, it's not going to get any better. And so that's why you need to have something called like an outlet that we're going to get into where you can really release your emotions and release that into there. But once again, this quote's very important. It's always how you react, how you respond. That's going to determine your emotions, not how someone else makes you feel because they can't really make you feel anything. And here's another part, very important. Many people today are very busy. They have like very busy schedules, very just like they have to juggle a lot, you know? After they might be doing a lot of work, they want to exercise, they want to make a company, or they want to sing and stuff like that, or they have a family. They have a lot of stuff like this, or even as a student, you have a lot of responsibilities too, right? And it can get overwhelming at times, and that's why we really need to have this ability to keep our emotions in check, right? And also, not only that, but have time for us, right? And kind of think about just relax a little bit and think about like, okay, what do I need to do? Like, what can I do? What can I do to like make myself, if I'm maybe sad or upset for something, how can I make myself feel better? And stuff like that is very important because otherwise you're gonna keep going and you keep doing all this stuff, but you're not gonna enjoy it. And that's really, that's really the main goal, right? To be happy to enjoy life, to do all the things that you want to do, but you don't have to like pay the price of not liking like your job or something like that, right? We really want to be in control of our brains and our emotions. And that is literally going to give us the most, like the most control and also the most like satisfaction because we realize like, I know who I am and I know how I'm going to react to things and I know what I can do. And like all the things I've done in the past, all the great things like, I've done this big project in school that was kind of difficult. I've given a presentation or maybe I scored this goal in soccer or something like that. All those things will help build up like your self-confidence and everything like that. And you just need to remember like, I can do a lot of things. Like I have the potential for a lot and really we don't want your emotions to stop you from doing that. So here we're gonna talk about emotional outlets. And they're not really like this. They're not just like outlets with like happy faces. What they are is different. It could be a wide variety of things. I just have a couple of examples. So let's say you like writing, maybe that could be your outlet, you like sports or painting or reading books. But really what it is, is if you're super mad, let's say, or super sad, you want to be able to do something. Because we already said sitting in your room thinking about it is not going to do anything. That's why maybe you write down your feelings and then you just keep writing and writing. And then it feels like, you feel so much better because you were able to kind of express it. Or maybe you paint like a very sad picture to show how you feel. You feel better now because you're like, well, I made this painting and I did something cool. And now I don't feel so bad because 
I was able to paint something really cool and actually like, wow, the painting looks really nice. Or you read a book and you're reading a book and then a lot of times you read like maybe a fiction book or nonfiction, you learn so much at the end. And you're like, wow, that was a really good book. I learned so much. And also like doing sports, right? Being together with your friends and doing sports and then like you get to maybe, maybe go running or something like that. And by having these more physical things, that are actually gonna help you. And it's called like, called kind of like venting and you releasing your emotions because we're gonna talk about this too is it can be really bad if you just like coop it all up and then it just stays there and then nothing ever happens and you don't release anything until eventually just like shaking like a soda bottle, right? It's gonna explode. And we don't want that to happen. Here, we hit, this is kind of like the development, right? of like how our emotions can eventually lead to bigger things right so maybe we're very sad then maybe we get angry then we just like maybe realize that oh i i don't like being angry or i don't like being sad and then we're still not very like happy we don't feel good or anything but versus if we step in in the first part here or we step in right here we're like why am i mad like what can i do about that okay, maybe I can't do anything. Well, let me go, go for a run, go paint something, go read a book, go play basketball, go write a story. You know, all these things that we can do. And it's, it's very interesting actually, because you might think, well, what does this have to do with anything, right? Playing basketball, how is this supposed to make me like not mad? Actually, at the end, you're going to feel a lot better and you just feel so much more calm and relaxed. And that really helps you with managing your emotions because after you do something, after you do something, it kind of takes your mind off it, right? But then afterwards, then you're like, well, maybe it's not so bad after all. You write a story, maybe you do a nice painting, you look at the painting, you're like, wow, that was a really nice painting. And you're like, I can do a lot. And I don't need to be mad about this pretty small thing. So it's really like that. And we, we want to step in here before it just progresses and gets to like this point. Right. And we don't want it to like just stay there. And that's how you become like permanently unhappy, which you don't want. Okay. We have another cool question, right? What happens if we don't do this and we don't check our emotions and we just let it grow, right? And build inside of us. Hopefully you guys know the answer because like I kind of hinted at it. And this one is kind of a trick question too. So we'll see what people put. Yeah, and I'm really glad I could like help share my experiences with everyone because I feel like it, it's very it's very good when someone can like kind of relate and then kind of give their their perspective and especially if you're not sure about anything then it's really useful really for you and it, it's really good for me just to share my experience I've already been through a good amount and I like to share with you guys so you guys can have better lives and better futures. Okay, we can stop the poll here. Great job. So it's actually two though, both of them. So A and B, correct. We do explode emotionally, but also we feel trapped and we actually feel trapped before we explode because eventually we feel trapped and trapped and trapped and trapped and we can't take it anymore. And we just go boom and we don't want that. Here, this is what can happen, right? Because if we don't understand our emotions, like we can imagine this cage as like our emotions, right? And we're like, we can't do anything. We, we can't do anything with like my emotions is stopping me. I can't go play basketball. I can't go to school and study like hard and enjoy my life. I can't talk to friends anymore just because I'm so sad or I'm so angry and like all these negative things. But the problem is eventually you're just going to be like, I want out. I don't want to be in this cage anymore, but you might not really know how to control that. So versus like making, opening the door in the cage and walking out, you might start banging on the cage with your fist and try to pry the bars open. And just like, just like you can think of a bird in a cage, right? It always wants to get out and it's causing like large amounts of noise where it's really loud. And then it wants to like get out sometimes. And we can think of ourselves kind of like that if we don't control our emotions. Once again, we can be very sad and feel like there's nothing I can do. Like I can't control my emotions is, it's like over, I can't get out of this. It's like an endless cycle of me being happy, sad, 
and then just staying sad and then being mad again and then being happy for a very short time. So after a while, you get really tired of it and you just be like, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. And the problem is you get super mad and you start doing things that you wouldn't normally do. You're like, well, afterwards, you're like, wait, why did I do this? Like, I didn't mean to. But then you were just so mad that it, you just kind of turned on the wrong switch in your brain and you just started doing a bunch of crazy things just because you held it in so long, which is not what we want. We want it to kind of release, you know, not all at once, but slowly by slowly. And that's really the correct way to do it through the outlets I was talking about through playing basketball or eventually I'm going to get to the end where we talk about like, you can talk to maybe your parents or like one of your best friends or something. And that talking to someone can really help a lot too, because then they can be like, yeah, I felt that way too. Like when I got a bad score, maybe on my test or I missed a goal in like water polo, I didn't feel that good, but you know, it's okay. Like you can still be wonderful and everything. And that's really like, why, why is it really important for, for you to talk with other people too. And once again, like here it is, you just feel like you can't control anything. It's really a horrible feeling because you just feel so hopeless, which we definitely do not want. Okay, now I've been talking for a while now, so I wanna ask if there's any questions. And yeah, and we'll, we should have a good amount of time left, so I think I'll answer a couple questions here. Yep, so we have a ton of questions, so I apologize that we can't get to all of them. But our first question is simple, but pretty deep. So our first question is, is love an emotion? Yes, yes, I would say it is an emotion because if we characterize like the emotions, like what we feel, right? Love is definitely something that people feel. And sometimes it also has like the, the same effect though, because if you're so deeply in love, then you may not be thinking about things like correctly or like in the movies to get love stricken, something like that. So it definitely is an emotion. All right, thank you for that answer. Our next question is, why do we associate colors with different emotions? Is it a biological thing? So it, it could be, but I really think that it's like I was saying before, it's really with our backgrounds because let's say you grew up in like a red room and like that's just how you grew up. Then you may not associate red with the bad color just because you see it so often versus like you maybe you live in like a like a gray house with no colors and they go outside and then every color has so much emotion i really think is based off of your personality perspective where you came from where you grew up with and eventually like i said we're all unique and then they all come together to make us and that's why it's so different for everyone because we saw with the color activity we did it's so different. Like a lot of the times it's common, right? But a lot of the times there's some like different answers and really just because people are so unique. All right. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, are you taking another one? Yeah. Yeah. We can do probably two more and then we'll move on. All right. Sounds great. Our next question is, should we ignore our positive emotions or should we recognize them and do something about it? Yeah. So the, the great, that was a great question too. The, the positive emotions, they have a different, it's a different like kind of spin to them, right? Because the negative emotions, they can make us do like bad things sometimes if we're angry or sad, right? But the positive emotions, yes, we should recognize it. But a lot of times the thing, the technically the thing that we do about them is we just like enjoy them and be like, maybe you might like for future reference, be like, why am I so happy, right? Oh, maybe I did well or like I worked really hard and maybe it paid off stuff like that. And then that way in the future, you can be like, oh, well, I remember I was happy back then because I did this and I like scored a goal in the game or I like finished this book and felt really good or I was able to play with my friends, stuff like that. So you can remember because everyone's going to have their sad days or their angry days. And you can kind of use that to be like, well, I like to maybe go swimming or I like to read books. And then you do that and that will really help you. And you'll be like, oh, afterwards, you might feel a little happy too. So yeah, that was a great question. All right, thank you so much for that explanation. And our next question for this section is, if a person is stubborn, is it because they're not controlling their emotions? That, that's a very interesting question too, great job. 
Um, the thing with stubborn is I don't really think it's connected to often with like emotions. It's just often like um, kind of like this drive that someone may have and they just want to do what they want to do. A lot of times I don't really think it's like connected with the emotions though. So yeah. All I'm right. going to move on now. Yeah. Thank you guys for all your questions. I'm so glad I could really take the time to answer them. Okay, now we're gonna talk about anger even more a little bit, just in depth too, because I think it's really important for you guys to understand it because a lot of times it's pretty common, sadly, so yeah. We're actually gonna talk about a little bit about biology, but not too much here. Just anger, how anger affects your brain and body because not only do you not feel that good, it actually affects like your actual brain and like your body too. And it's not, the effects are actually not that good. So I'm not going to really talk about this. this is very like specific, but we talk about like the sources of anger, right? You might feel mixed emotions and that's just like, it's going to trigger your brain. Right. And it starts making all these like hormones, but these are not the good hormones that you usually have is like stress hormones. Like whenever you feel super stressed out, you're like super worried. You're like, Oh no, like maybe I didn't study or like, Oh no, like I need to really do something right now. Stuff like that, that will produce the stress hormones. And Sometimes it's okay because it's adrenaline and stuff like that. But a lot of times there's also other really like um, really specific like chemical stuff that's actually going to be bad for you. And it's going to like create that, that like bad response too, because we look here is with adrenaline, what ends up happening is it will cause your body to kind of work a little bit overdrive. Right. Cause if we think all the way back to maybe like, maybe like when we used to like uh, talking about like a little bit about the evolution, right? We go all the way back to maybe when we were being chased by something, right? If we're being chased by something, we feel stressed out and our body's like, okay, adrenaline. And if you guys don't know, adrenaline will make you feel like you have more energy and run faster maybe, or like do something better or just be more alert and focused. So that's why like from a long time ago, we would have adrenaline and then like we'd be able to run faster from the like cheetah or whatever that's chasing us. And hopefully we'll be able to survive. But in today's society, we're not really running from cheetahs or rhinos or like lions or stuff like that. We're really just being stressed out because of the things that we have to do. And the, the thing is the adrenaline is really only supposed to be used for a short amount of time. And that's about it. Because after you're chased by a cheetah, you may not see the cheetah for another like month or so, right? And then you try to avoid it. And then maybe once again, you see it. But it's like a once a month, per, once a month thing versus now with a lot of the things that people have to do and they don't know how to release their stress so then it kind of builds up and then these stress hormones will cause your heart to beat faster your brain to kind of work overdrive and a lot of your other organs like we see the kidneys here they start to work faster and faster and the problem is with that is that it will actually cause problems because it's working too hard and again you're not like working out you're not doing anything that's building like the muscle or like working you out in a healthy way, it's causing a lot of stress and the negative effects that come with it because working out is different because working out, you're really kind of relaxing your body a little bit and then you're, you're building muscle and then you're also releasing some stress by working out versus you're just sitting there at the desk and you feel the stress and you feel like your muscles tense up. You, you feel like you can't like breathe that well. And so that's really all the bad effects over time that can have like a lot of just, bad things that will come of it and you can have like really chronic which means like long-term problems like health problems so it's very serious again they talk about yeah they, they just talk about like in the brain here uh it talks about like how if you have if you have a lot of stress or anger it can create these chemicals here that are going to actually uh, disrupt like a little part of your brain a little bit because of just the chemicals and stuff like that Here's what I was talking about. Heart rate is going to go up, your blood pressure, your like, um, yeah, your bloody fatty acids. So that just means like the amount of kind of sugar in your blood and fatty acid. Because remember, if we're running from a cheetah, you want the most energy in your blood so your muscles can work the fastest. But the problem is we're not running from a cheetah anymore. We're just sitting here at our desk. And for those to go up, that can actually lead to some people that are not eating as healthy, right? They have like the the, too much oil too much grease 
they can have heart attacks because of that. And it's very serious. So that's why it's also important, not only for us to have a good life, but also for us to be healthy, that we actually control our emotions too. And it talks a little bit about the immune system and digestive system and like other stuff too. You can look at that as well. But that's one thing that I think not a lot of people actually know is that being angry is not only make you feel bad, it actually can make your body be less healthy, which is the last thing we want, right? Yeah. And so now we're going to get into actually how to prevent this, right? For, okay, for us, the very first step is to slow down and think before we do anything, right? Because we're talking about you're so angry that that classmate broke my pencil and then the switch like turns on and you're like, oh my goodness, I, I just, I'm so mad. I don't know what to do. I'm going to probably do some crazy thing that I, that I would not do normally, right? Because if I'm thinking normally, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that, right? I don't want to do like some crazy thing. I don't want to bang on the desk. I don't want to yell out loud. I don't want to cry. I don't want to scream. I don't want to do that. But when you have so much emotion, you're like, I just want to like do like a bunch of random stuff and then be like really mad and let it all out. That's why the number one step, always slow down. Take deep breath. <sighs> okay. He broke my pencil. It's okay. Let's just think about it for one second, right? One or like two seconds, right? Think about what might happen if we just go all out and we react, right? Versus what will happen is if we don't escalate the situation. So escalate means like make it worse versus we cool it down or like make it like better, right? So like we already said, we can bang on the tables and we can scream, but that's not going to help the situation. It's only going to escalate it. The teacher's going to be like, you have to go in timeout. And then you might be mad again because you're like, why am I putting in timeout? He broke my pencil. And so it keeps going in that cycle. And we don't want us to even start that cycle because then you can just be really hard for you to get out of it. So versus the other option is like, he broke my pencil. Okay, it is just a pencil. So I'm not going to get too mad about it. It's okay. I'm going to ask the teacher, tell the teacher what happened and hopefully get another pencil. And you look at the two outcomes. They're completely different, right? Here we have one, I'm like crying, I'm sitting in the corner, I'm like super angry at the teacher now because she put me in timeout versus like everything's fine, we're going through the day still and we still have fun at recess, we still have fun at lunch, you know, like everything's okay. And so you have to be really careful. Always think before you act, okay? Because once you act, you can't be like undo, where's the undo button? I can't like reverse it, it's already happened. So that's why you have to think. Once again, like stopping and thinking is so important before you act because it's going to really help you in all, in all like areas of life, right? A construction worker, if they're working the crane and then like something happens, they need to stop and think before they move, move the crane again or something because there's many people's lives that are in danger. Maybe if the crane falls over, stuff like that. That's the same thing with our emotions. We have to be careful. We have to be like, this could escalate. This could become a really bad situation but we don't want it to become that. We don't want to let it become that. And once again, this is a very perfect example of consequences, right? We have this poor dude over here. He's very mad. Maybe he pushes over these dominoes, but he doesn't realize that eventually these dominoes are going to come back and they're going to hit him. And this is not what we want, right? We don't want to start pushing the dominoes. We just want to kind of cool down, just kind of walk away from the situation, right? And then just think about like, okay, what are my options? A, B, C, right? Stuff like that. Here's a great example too. You're like, I'm gonna kick this person off and you guys are really high up on this ledge and then there's just a piece of metal there, right? Well, if you, if you kick him, yes, he's gonna fall, but you're also gonna fall backwards too. And that's really, really what happens, right? We look at the kid who broke the pencil, he probably would have gotten in trouble if we just told on him, right? But now we're in more trouble than he is for screaming and kicking. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important. Always think, always be like, what can I do to make the best situation? We don't want to escalate it. We don't want it to become like out of control. We don't want that. We just want to calm down, be like, okay, what's the best possible scenario and become reasonable. Cause let's say you become very calm and you go back to the kid and be like, Oh, can I have my, can I have like another pencil since you broke it? And the kid's like, oh, well, this person's not screaming. They're not doing all these crazy stuff. Okay, yeah, here, here's a pencil. 
problem solved, right? It's not a big deal. Everything's fine. That's what the best situation is. Okay. And we always need to remember, we can think about it. It's not like he you breaks your pencil. You have to act immediately. You can be like, you can just think about like really quick, like, what do I need to do? Uh, should I, should I like get angry? No, no, probably not. Cause I'll get in trouble. Right. So maybe just talk to him, ask him to give me a pencil. Okay, there we go. And then you do that. And then you're going to see that the results are so much better. You feel better. You don't feel mad. Right. And then you're going to be healthier too, because we already said how being mad makes you like kind of, uh, kind of hurts your system. You're going to be healthier. And then the whole class is probably going to thank you. Right. Because you didn't like scream or yell and a teacher is going to be happier. So overall, it's just such so much better than actually just not controlling and just letting it all out. And yeah, this is this is like really important to any bad consequences, any bad things that could happen. Also, is it going to affect me? Like, if I do this, like, will it go on my record or something? Will it make it harder to go and get in college or something like that? We really have to be careful because a lot of times we didn't even see the consequences and we just acted. That's the wrong thing to do. We want to be careful because we can be like, well, if I if I bang on the tables, if I do something, I could be sent to, sent to principal's office, you know? I get all sorts of bad stuff could happen and we don't want that. And then once again, the most important out of everything really is your emotions. We don't want to be affected. We don't want to be angry if we, if we have a choice not to be. So yeah, here's a great picture, I think, of taking a deep breath, relaxing, just calming down, taking the situation, like what happened, and that helps a lot too. Here we're going to do a different example than the breaking pencil one here. Let's say, for example, you got an argument with your best friend, like your best friend, you're super close, but then you got in a really bad argument. Maybe you're like arguing about like the, the best shoe color or something. And then you guys got really upset at each other and you guys like stormed off, ran away from each other, didn't want to talk to each other again, right? Well, the best thing to do in this situation, since they are your best friend and you really care about them and you didn't mean to really be mean or be an argument, the best thing is just take a deep breath and let it go. Because the best situation, right? We think about it. Best situation is both of you guys come back together, shake hands, like it's good. Then you guys can become friends again. Versus the worst situation is you guys don't talk to each other. You guys don't fix anything. You guys just like continue being mad at each other and you just never become friends again, which would be horrible because they were like so close to you. They're like your best friend and everything. We don't want that. So we don't really want this here. We don't want the two friends to be so mad at each other, not even talk to each other. We don't even look at each other. We don't want this. We really want, you know, come back, be like, I'm sorry. I, it was just, it's really a small deal. It's just shoe color, you know, like, oh, you're right. Pink is the best shoe color, stuff like that. And that's going to really help our relationships, right, with people, right? Because we're going to have the best, like, friendships and everything like that. And we're going to be able to really come back and fix it, too. Because we think about it, a lot of the times, like, if you ever got in an argument with your friend, and then your friend immediately came back and said, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to say that. You know, I really want to apologize. Can we still be friends? You're most of the time going to say yes. You're not going to say no again because they really showed that they're sorry. They apologize. And it's easier for you to just agree and then become friends again. So that's what's happening when you go to your friend, even though it may be hard, and apologize and then ask them, like, oh, can, I'm sorry. Like, can we still be friends? Because once again, best situation. We want the best situation. Okay, do we have any questions? All right. So thank you so much for that seminar. I think people really enjoyed it. And I personally really liked it because it has taught me a lot about managing emotions and how to deal with anger. And I thought it was really useful on a day-to-day -day basis because it's something that we all recognize and we all deal with. So thank you so much for that seminar. And big thank you to everyone who came to our seminar today. And I know that most people were really active in the chat and just big thank you to everyone who responded to questions or asked questions. And just thank you for joining us in general because you are, the audience is what makes I Explore possible. So again, thank you guys so much. And I hope that thank all you guys, was awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys all for like interacting too. I had such a great time. So look forward to the next one, okay? Yep, stay tuned for the next one. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.